I'm going to actually talk about a few interesting things. There's going to be uh, two surprises. First of all, most of you guys know already that this is our, our rough pipeline of how frames are, are working through our GPU, right? The game engine is responsible for generating the frame. And it, it's also calculating what we call animation time, right? It's the encoding that's inside of a frame that eventually gets rendered. Now, that goes into DirectX, right? A bunch of draw calls, all that information is communicated forward. Eventually, our driver converts that into actual rendering, you know, kind of doing, doing math on our GPU. And at the end of that, it spits out a rendered frame into our frame buffer, right? So everybody's familiar with that pipeline. The last thing we do is scan. Well, now we're doing something pretty different on Pascal. For the very first, whoa, yeah, this is actually kind of cool. All right, so uh, <laughs> high FPS games. You all know about eSports, right? High FPS games like Counter-Strike are running at many hundreds of frames today on Pascal. So the question is, what good is that? Well, it, it's, it's actually kind of cool when you think about it. Unfortunately, you have two choices today, VSync on or VSync off. If you turn VSync on, what happens is that pipeline gets back pressured all the way to the game engine and the whole pipeline slows down to the refresh rate of your game, uh, of your monitor, basically, right? So when you turn VSync on, what you're actually doing is telling the game engine, slow down, because we can only generate effectively one frame for every refresh interval. When you turn VSync off, what's saying is, I don't care about the monitor synchronization, bring it as fast as you possibly can, so the thing renders you know, 400 frames per second. Now the problem, obviously, with VSync on is all of that back pressure causes latency. As a matter of fact, some, some, sometimes it's high latency, like 100 milliseconds of latency in that pipeline. Now when you turn VSync off, you get very, very low latency because there's no back pressure, right? So as you move your mouse, that frame gets generated and moves through the pipe very quickly and it shows on the screen as, as soon as possible. So this is the choice that gamers are faced with today. And um, the vast majority of competitive gamers are playing with VSync off for this exact reason. Right? It's kind of a crappy experience because VSync off tears. And especially when you're running at high frame rates, if you're moving around playing esports, it's just sort of a jittery mess. Okay, so we're taking another look at how this works. And for the first time, we're doing what I call decoupling render and display. And it's kind of an obvious thing to do in hindsight, right? Render can generate all the frames it wants, really, it can. And those frames can land in the frame buffer like the final rendered surfaces can land in that frame buffer. And then we can pretty much do whatever we want to that. Right? We, could, we can show them right now, we can show them later, we could have many of them, we can maybe not show some. Right? So what we're doing with Fast VSync, which is a brand new technology with Pascal, it's actually on in the review driver you're gonna get, is we're finding a new way here, right? It's a third path. So basically, there is no flow control. The game engine says VSync is off. Latency is almost as low as VSync off. It's not quite as low, but it's almost as low because there's no back pressure. But at the end of the day, there's no tearing. And there's no tearing because we are choosing which frame to put on the screen. So if you think about this, it's kind of cool. The, the, the front end of the pipeline is running as fast as it possibly can. We're picking the last rendered frame to put on the screen with no tearing. So the experience you get, depending on the frame rate, is roughly equivalent to VSync clarity with the latency of VSync off. Now, um, we have that demo for you in the back, and it's actually pretty spectacular. I hope you try it out. The, uh, the result, results of this are pretty clear, right? So our strategy is, you know, I've got that buffer back there now, which we you know, kind of call the coupled frame buffer. Um, I'm just gonna name a couple of those buffers in this example. So I'll call it the front buffer, the back buffer, and the last rendered buffer. So knowing that I can control these independently from the front end, you can all kind of already tell how this works, right? I'm scanning out of the front buffer while I'm rendering into the back buffer. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm building the next image in the back buffer. And as soon as that image is rendered, I'm gonna call that back buffer the last rendered buffer. Okay, then, without even telling the game anything's happened, without changing my scan, we're gonna start rendering into a new back buffer. Right, so the render is never being back pressured. We're just going, hey, back buffer A, last rendered buffer, back buffer, you know, it's just sort of ping pong, writing these buffers. And when the, when the scan is finally done from the front buffer, we're gonna switch to the last rendered buffer, right? So effectively, we're sampling a frame pipeline, right? There's frames coming at the display, 
and we're going to sample one that's in sync with the refresh. Is that all pretty clear? Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let me show you the data. The data is pretty compelling. So this is Counter-Strike Go running on Pascal, and you can see that the latency is shockingly high. It's 90 milliseconds or so. This is just a bunch of different samples done with a high-speed camera. So if, you, if you're playing Counter-Strike Go, one of the most popular esports games, a uh, first-person shooter, you know, your, your latency is critical. And in this example, it's, it's pretty much you're gonna lose every time if you turn VSync on. So gamers today are playing these games with all this kind of jittery tearing stuff going on because these things are running a couple hundred frames a second. When you turn fast sync on, what you're gonna get is about eight milliseconds or so more latency than vSync off. Okay, so what this gives you is what I think of as the best of both worlds, right? You're getting no tearing, which is high visual fidelity with very, very low latency. Okay, any questions on any of that? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, say it one more time. What will be the default driver setting? The default driver setting is application specified, right? In our normal control panel. Like right here, if you look at this guy. Good question, by the way. Uh, the default <laughs> is the little green guy, which says whatever the application says. And that, and that will probably be vSync on then? Uh, it's really up to the application. I expect it to be vSync on, but some titles do do vSync off. Um, but the other, uh, the other way to think about it is, this is just one more way of interfacing to your monitor in terms of uh, what's our flip policy, right? So at the end of the day, there's a little bit of logic inside of our driver that's saying, um, you know, the monitor refresh is happening right now, what should we do? And, and, and do you agree that for normal gamers, so not the competitive ones, but for normal gamers, this is just simply energy waste? Um, it's, uh, I, I think it's all up to individuals, right? When you look at Pascal, it's pretty energy efficient. And for me, I'm going to prefer the low latency over the, you know, a couple of pennies uh, for, for running the GPU. But at the end of the day, I, I think it's going to vary based on the game type. And it's going to, like, if you're running a, a MOBA, as an example, um, and you're not playing it competitively, maybe you don't, you don't need it. So that's why it's exactly an option. You know, it's off, on. Some people are really excited about adaptive. Adaptive is another way of doing this. Adaptive is the idea that, well, you know, I, I don't want to normally tear, so if my frame rate's below the refresh rate of the monitor, then go ahead and flip immediately. Um, I'm sorry, wait for the, wait for the interval. If my, refresh, if my render rate is above the refresh rate, then go ahead and tear. This is a new twist, right? Now we've decoupled the front end from the back end, so we are effectively subsampling the uh, frame stream. Make sense? Yes, sir. This is only for Pascal or for early revisions too? Um, we're going to make it available across all the GPUs that can support it. I expect it to be fairly broad. <clears throat> ah, that's a great question. So the question is, what's going to happen to G-Sync? Um, this technology, like other technologies, is sort of orthogonal to G-Sync. Because what G-Sync is saying is, when my refresh rate is low, I'm sorry, when my render rate is low, below the refresh rate, then I would like the monitor to synchronize with the render rate. This technology is mostly useful when your render rate is very high. Now today with G-Sync, when your render rate is very high, you're kind of left with the two poor choices. You, you can either turn V-Sync on, or, and, it, and you can actually see that today in your control panel, you can select V-Sync policy independent of your monitor interface technology. So as I was saying, when G-Sync is active and the render rate is low, then we're gonna synchronize to the refresh rate. When the render rate is high, you have to tear or you have to kind of back pressure. Now with fast sync, you can turn it on with G-Sync. Right, fast sync and G-Sync, you know what's gonna happen, right? You're gonna, you're basically gonna subsample if the render rate is very high and you're going to uh, be aligned with the monitor in the, in the render if the, if the refresh rate falls below the rate of the monitor. So it's pretty cool, it's complimentary. Oh, I'm sorry, one second, there's somebody over, I'll, I'll come right back to you. Yeah, where was it? That's me. Uh, it's good. Ah, how are you doing? Uh, that's me. We, good to see you. Yeah, hi. Uh, that's me. We didn't need a G-Sync display anymore. Do you need a G-Sync display anymore? Uh, uh, we, yeah, we didn't need a G-Sync display anymore. Hmm, that's an interesting question given our last conversation. But I would, I would say that G-Sync is a technology that is um, uh, complemented by this technology. This doesn't replace G-Sync, because G-Sync is most useful when the render rate is below the refresh rate, right? So when the render rate is low, 
you want G-Sync. When the render rate is high, I actually think fast sync is a pretty good solution. Yeah, but it's a good question. Uh, let me get here, because I felt like I kind of blew them up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. What, what is silk smoothness? Where is silk smoothness? <laughs> ah. <laughs> that is not there. Okay, that is, that, that, is an, that is an old data point. Excellent question, though, and I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, Kevin. Uh, so is this uh, analogous to a synchronous time warp in VR? Ooh, that's interesting. I don't know. I think it's kind of similar, right? Uh, although asynchronous time warp is 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 actually it is it's it's um it's over -sample. So if you think about asynchronous time warp, it says whatever was rendered last, I will warp. Um, this is saying whatever, and it'll do that every frame. This is saying kind of whatever was rendered last, I will display. So it's kind of I guess you're right. It's kind of similar. It's better. It's, yeah, it's new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one more time, fast sync won't, won't require a special display. Right. It will work on any display. So uh, where is this buffer? What buffer? Uh, three buffers. Ah, okay. So uh, let's go back. So remember I, I kind of drew a picture that said, hey, uh, we have decoupled the render from display, right? That is our frame buffer. Right? So the, we already do this, right? We already have a frame buffer where the post-rendered frame sits before we display it. So now we're just being more intelligent, um, smarter about how we uh, are manipulating that post-rendered buffer. Yes, sir. Could we ever see this on TVs? Whoa. <laughs> I do not know. But I hope so. It'd be kind of cool. I mean, when would you do that? Would, would it be, well, why would you put it on a TV? So maybe if you connect your PC to your TV and you want to just kind of synchronize to it, or? Yeah, I don't know. Let's think about it. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, yeah. For graphics, I think it's fine. Yeah. It just works. Yeah. Right? Uh, for video, I think we kind of have to think about it because yeah. the source is generally never running at faster than 60 hertz yeah. or something. But for graphics, I think it just works because you just, all you're doing is rendering as fast as you can render into a, a cube picking the best frame from that queue to display on the display with vSync, you know, without tear. And yep. that works on a display port, you know, PC monitor or HDMI TV or whatever. The interface and the, the, the scan out of the display is essentially a revival of what's going on here, so it should just work. Absolutely. Uh, the key thing I want to make sure you guys understand is that once you've decoupled the render from the display, there are all kinds of interesting things to do. That's all I'm going to say. Hey, Tom. Yes, sir. Ryan, what's up? So since you're discarding frames, at a conceptual level, what happens to uh, frame pacing, frame smoothness? Um, so frame pacing is mostly happening, is actually entirely happening at the um, display, right? So think of the, uh, as that as, if I come to this picture, flip logic. Okay, so the flip logic is what's primarily responsible for frame pacing for SLI as an example, and uh, that logic has been enhanced in this use case. Of course, this use case works for SLI as well. Um, so think about this flip logic as getting better and better and better, and it's becoming a more critical piece of our entire visual solution. So yeah, it still works, and uh, fast sync. Um, uh, you know, you're talking about a case where you're rendering very high, uh, and so, yeah, we'll be some sampling uh, the render frame. But you're, you're kind of hinting at a broader question, which I don't want to answer. Yeah. But go ahead and ask it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like, again, conceptually, it just seems like, you know, you, you do take some sort of hit to smoothness because you never quite know what frame you're going to lose. That is actually right. Right, so so you're, but the cool part is, if you're rendering very fast, then the delta of time from frame to frame is extremely small. So the faster the render pipeline is running, the less sampling error that you have. Right, so if you're running, that's why again I say this is a technology for games that are running well in excess of the refresh rate. As the render rate declines, this becomes sampling becomes much more problematic. Right. There's no good frame when you're off by half an interval. When you're off by, you know, 16 milliseconds on a 16 millisecond interval, you're kind of screwed, right? That's going to that's going to stutter. 
Yes, sir. No, it's unlikely. Uh, but if you were, could you apply to the R computer the R uh, game to run the Android twenty eight? Um, I don't think that I would apply this to VR simply because the, that's such an animation critical application. But um, I, you know, I would leave that up to our VR experts. I don't know the answer to that specifically. And let me take one more question because I know I'm be between you and lunch. Yes. This looks a lot like triple buffering, which uh, has been for a long time exclusive to OpenGL. Mm. And are there any technical differences between what you invented and uh, the triple <laughs> buffering? Mm from the old days? Well, um, that's a very good question. I think of it a uh, step back a little bit. With triple buffering, and when the render rate's very high, what will happen? The buffers will all fill, and you'll back pressure the application, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, triple buffering is not going to change the the uh, impact um, on the application or the pipeline sort of rate, right? The problem with any kind of sync, like vSync, is that your, your promise is every frame you render I'm gonna show, and no tearing. So you're just kinda at that point logically screwed. There's nothing you can do with buffering. If you say every frame you render I'm gonna show and I'm not gonna tear, then your rate is the refresh rate. So what we're trying to say here is, actually I'm gonna pick the right frame to show. And I want you to render a lot of them because I'm going to subsample them. And the reason I'm running, I'm subsampling is because I want this pipeline to run as fast as possible. Because every single, I'm going to do it from your, your projection, okay? When I'm in the game engine, we want that to run fast, okay? And when you're in DirectX, you want that to run fast. So as a matter of fact, you want those to be about three milliseconds. Three milliseconds when you're running really fast. Imagine that this whole thing is synchronized to the refresh of the, uh, the interval, right? Then every stage takes the same amount, which is 16 milliseconds on the 60 hertz monitor. So at the end of the day, it's all about render, 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 and subsample. Okay, I gotta move on. But uh, in the back, I wanna tell you, we do have this set up side by side. So you can take a look at the V-Sync on, it's identical configured. And I did do this myself earlier. You can take your iPhone or whatever you want, maybe you got a high-speed camera with you, and point it at one side, click the fire button, and look at it in slow-mo. And then point it at the V-Sync one and look at it. Okay, you're gonna be amazed that it's about half or more the latency, or half or less. The question is, can you use this with G-Sync at 144 hertz? And uh, the answer is obviously yes, right? G-Sync is kind of an orthogonal, um, um, thing, and it, it, as you have a very high render rate, that's really the question. G-Sync is doing good stuff for when the render rate is below the refresh rate. This is doing relatively good stuff for when the render rate is multiple times the refresh rate. So I, I think when you really think about what's happening, you don't want the render rate to be a little bit faster than the refresh rate, because that's going to be poor when you're subsampling, right? What you really want is the render rate to be multiples of the interval, okay? Are you excited? You love it? Gonna write good things? Okay, excellent. <laughs> okay, moving on.